The legendary Yamaha DX7 synthesizer is the most popular synthesizer of all time, and shaped the, the sound of a decade and a half. However, both at the time and even now, buying one is prohibitively expensive for most. I happen to have a Yamaha DX7, and I promise I have one, it's just too big to fit in the frame. But since they haven't been produced in 30 years, their supply is going down and the prices are going up, while existing ones are simply succumbing to age. The DX7 and all other synthesizers of the DX family use a technique of generating sound called FM synthesis. The main idea is pretty simple. If you know the idea behind the Fourier transform, that all sounds can be decomposed into sine waves of different frequencies, FM works like that, but backwards. It composes sounds by arranging sine waves of different frequencies. So, you can see this example here. Two sine waves of different frequencies combined make a sound which is more complex than its constituent parts. FM synthesizers differ in the number of sine waves they can combine, called operators. So, for example, this would be the result of a two-operator FM synthesizer, as well as adding additional features like other periodic waves with more harmonic complexity, like square waves or triangle waves. I decided to recreate these synthesizers using salvaged parts and publish the project online so that anyone can get the design and build their own. Before going any further, I must say that the PCBs in this video, such as this PCB, and all of these, were generously provided by PCBWay, and for a project that is moderately complex such as this, using a PCB is essential. Circuit board has many connections which would be impractical to make on a breadboard, as well as high frequencies for the clocks, which don't work well on a breadboard as well. From PCBWay you can get very high PCBs for a low price, quickly delivered, and I'll directly link the project in the description so that if you want you can order the PCBs immediately. For my project I was able to select the PCBs to have a blue color to match the theme I was going with for no extra charge, and as you can see they came out looking amazing. So thank you PCBWay for sponsoring this video and follow the link in the description to get your own version of the circuit board. Now, for those who follow me you'll know that this summer I released a synthesizer design based on the YM3812 FM synthesizer IC, which was used to provide the sound for most games that ran on computers with the MS-DOS operating system. Now, the YM3812 is quite simple, it only has two FM operators, however it still made interesting sounds, and combining it with a color LCD and a very modern microcontroller, a CH32V307 using the RT Thread real-time operating system, enabled me to access the full breadth of features it offers. However, I wanted to go bigger, so I decided to make an even more advanced FM synthesizer. Going on the theme of vintage video games, I decided to base my next project on the YM2612 FM synthesizer IC used in the legendary Sega Genesis video game console. So I designed and ordered and got these PCBs. Now let me give you a quick overview of the design. By the way, just a quick side note, for this PCB I used a YM3438, which is simply a CMOS version of the YM2612 FM synthesizer IC. So, are used in the Sega Genesis. The only differences between the two ICs are the technology used to make them, otherwise they are practically identical. Now, let me show you around the circuit board. So, this circuit board has five main parts. First of all, it is the clock generation. It uses an 8 MHz crystal with this, with this simple inverter topology, which I will link a design guide to in the description, to simply give you a clean 8 MHz signal. Now, this 8 MHz signal is then sent to a clock divider IC. Since, for this project, it is based on the Sega Genesis console, which not only has a YM2612, but it also has an SN76489 synthesizer chip, which is just simpler than the YM2612, however, it needs a lower frequency clock. So the clock divider is used to divide the clock and uh, it divides it into both 4 MHz and 500 kHz so that you can use any version of the SN76489 which comes in both 4 MHz and 500 kHz varieties, selectable with this jumper here. Now, for the input, for the input, a serial data connection is used. So I chose an SN74LS164 specifically because it is a TTLIC, which means that it can accept both 5 volts and 3.3 volts inputs. That means that you can control it from an older microcontroller with 5 volts or a newer one with 3.3 volts, such as a Raspberry Pi Pico. All of the signals, if you are using a YM262, 
two, then all of the input signals will be TTL level, which means that everything, the whole system can work on 3.3 volts as long as you provide a 5 volt rate. Also, it's using serial. So by using serial, you can use less pins, even though a lot of pins are still needed, you can use less pins than if the necessary parallel bus was used. However, these control signals still have to be handled individually, even though y you could use another serial to parallel converter to get these to work as well. Now, how does this whole system work? So, the, both of these ICs are for sound generation, and since they're older, they use a, a parallel bus for the input. That means that eight signals are needed for each IC which is why the serial to parallel converter was used. And to select which IC you're writing to, because they both use the same pins, these control signals are used. The description of these control signals will be added in the description. So all of the data sheets and necessary information, even information that you can't find easily, is added in the description because I have done a lot of research on these two ICs. However, what you need to know is that the YM2612 essentially ha acts as two ICs over here and it has a register bank, so it requires register bank selection. This complicates the control logic a bit, but it's still pretty easy to write to it and get an output. Now, unlike many of the other FM synthesizer ICs, the YM2612 is simplified, which is actually pretty nice. So it doesn't require an external digital to analog converter. It has a digital to analog converter on board and actually has one which is quite lo-fi and makes the sound pretty interesting. So it outputs two audio signals here and the audio signals from the YM2612 are centered on 2.5 volts it's a, it's a, since it's a 5 volt chip and the sound of the S76489 well it's essentially kind of like a PWM converter which means that it is it goes from 0 to 5 which is why this section is necessary so this is an active summer and a 10 kilohertz Salon key low pass filter now why is this necessary audio signals coming out of the two sound generation ICs have to be combined which is done by this op-amp, the LM358, it's just a generic op-amp, and it's done by first biasing both signals to 2.5 volts, and then sending that through an inverting amplifier, as well as adding a, a 5k potentiometer, this can be really any size of potentiometer, approximately the same, which acts as the, well, volume knob. Because the chips output different levels, notably the SN76489 outputs at a much higher level, like audio level, than the 2612, they need to be summed differently. So, as you can see, the SN has a 22 uh, kilo ohm resistor, while both left and right channels of the YM are summed up with 2.2K uh, resistors, and in the end, this comes out to a pretty balanced sound. Now, because both ICs are quite old and have, well, pretty shady outputs, um, they, they output a lot of high-frequency noise, and this high-frequency noise needs to be taken care of. So, using uh, a Using the second op-amp in the LM358 package, I designed a Salon key low-pass filter with pretty simple, or with pretty common resistor values. So this has a cutoff of approximately 10 kilohertz and will very drastically cut off the noise that's above 10 kilohertz. And you really, you might say, oh, humans can hear up to 20 kilohertz, and that's true, but these sound ICs can't really output that well at higher frequencies, and the YM2612 even has a register to calibrate the output at higher frequencies because they're simply just not good at, which is why this topology here is necessary, a Salon key low pass filter, and it actually filters the sound and makes it quite nice, and the sound then goes out to the A out pin, or audio out. Now the final and simplest part of the circuit board is the capacitor bank. So because these are older ICs, they require a bit more power than usual, and that means that many capacitors of 100 nanofarad variety are required. And I've actually tested it out, and without capacitors, it doesn't really work that well. So these capacitors are pretty important, but the most important capacitor, and I'll show you here, is C15 here. Now, C15 is right next to the YM3438. Why is that? Well, the YM3438 or the YM2612, even more specifically, they require a lot of power because they are actually very complex ICs. So, to make sure that that power is retained, 
that you don't lose power, you need this capacitor here. And having this capacitor, uh, this, it's important to have it next to the power pins. So in this case, the, the, five, the 5 volts is right here and the ground is approximately somewhere over here. So having this capacitor right here, make sure that the YM3438 never crashes since this is genuinely complex chip and I will link an analysis for the FM synthesizer I see in the DX7 which is even more complicated than this one. All the rest of the circuitry is quite simple and you can see it follows a pretty logical arrangement with the clock generation over here then the counter over here going to here where you can select with a jumper whether you want 500 or 500 kilohertz or 4 megahertz for the SN76489 and uh, here is the analog circuitry which then gets sent to the output here. As you can see for this circuit board I had to do a little bodge over here. Well, bodge. I didn't have a 33 kilo ohm resistor on hand, so I substituted it with two 68 kilo ohm resistors in parallel. And you can actually do that. To simplify the bill of materials, you can substitute this. My marker though. Yeah, you can substitute this with 2x68k. And that would actually simplify the bill of materials, even though you'd have to add one more resistor. And I like simplifying the bill of materials. You can also substitute this resistor here with 2.2K. It will, it will work. I tested it. And this one, one mega ohm resistor is kind of optional. And even the 2.2K resistor is kind of optional. So if you are lacking parts, there are easy substitutes for everything. And in the end, this synthesizer doesn't come out to many parts because apart from apart from this board, the only thing you need is a microcontroller to, well, control it. So this explanation isn't worth much without demonstration. However, unfortunately, the code is not done yet since I decided to experiment a bit with it. But I will update the description once it's done with code for both the Raspberry Pi Pico and the CH32V307. I made it so that MIDI files can be played through USB using a DIY uh, Pico to U Pico USB MIDI converter. And I teamed up with a friend of mine who is actually an expert in making music for the YM2612. And the music you're listening to right now in the background was actually made by him. So as a demonstration to this amazing, the amazing sound of the synthesizer, he made songs which run on this system and show just how great sound can be. So I'll let him take it away. 